Hello and welcome back to the final session from today. We have the men's 73 kilo category here, live from Manama, Bahrain, it's the 2022 Asian Weightlifting Championships. I'm joined, of course, by the man, the myth, the legend, uh, the founder of Weightlifting AI, Max Ata. Max, we have one of the most highly anticipated sessions of the entire championships here. Uh, do you dare to make any predictions? I am super excited to see this session. We've been talking about these guys for a while. My predictions, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with, uh, I'm gonna go with Risky on this one. I think he's just so far out ahead of everybody. Right. But that certainly doesn't mean that we aren't gonna see some really good battles here. And who knows? Who knows what happens? Yeah, I mean it's these. Uh these last three lifters that we've just seen, Rizki, who was the taller lifter in the blue, then there was Dostin Yokubov, uh, and then the Chinese athlete, Zhang Shulin. Those are probably the three front runners. We actually don't know a huge amount about Zhang Shulin. He's put in 325 kilos as his entry total. That's the same as Dostin Yokubov, the uh, 67 kilo world champion who's just moved up to this category. We have seen Zhang training, and he is incredibly strong. Phenomenally so, yeah. Uh, he worked up to, well, he, he did 200 kilos for a pause front squat plus front squat, then loaded 210 kilos, did two singles there in the pause front squat, which is probably ample leg strength uh, <laughs> for this category of thought. I spoke with Yilin, who uh, works with Liu Zhao Jin Barbell. He sees lots of these Chinese athletes in training. Uh, he mentioned to me that uh, Shul uh, Zhang Shulin's best front squat is 240 kilos. We actually have a video of it, which you and I can take a look at right now. Uh, but he's sort of known as being one of the strongest squatters uh, in the Chinese team. Which is, uh, that's a, a pretty solid title to have. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's in the same category as Shi Ziyong, of course, who holds the world records here. Let's just take a look at this 240 quickly. Let's uh, see what you think of this, Max. You're, yeah, you're known for having a, having a pretty good squat wow. yourself. Yeah, that was very comfortable. Uh, he's definitely got the strength. We don't know. The Chinese have really shown some interesting uh, lifting here. We've got a, a few of them making only a few lifts, but succeeding yeah, <laughs> yeah. beyond belief. They've been uh, a little bit wobbly. I mean, a lot of these athletes yeah. are making their international debuts. I mean, uh, Zhang Shulin is uh, one of those athletes. He's competed nationally many times, but never made it to the international platform. So he really has to do a lot to, uh, to convince the Chinese sort of coaching staff that actually he ought to be moved up into that A-team. He ought to be training with... Uh, the top lift is in Beijing. It's probably unlikely to happen, seeing as he has ahead of him not just Xi Ziyong, but also Liu Xiaozhen, who's right. dropping down to the 73s. But you know, he's going to do what he can do to try and convince him that he's worth the investment. So here we have the, uh, the jury, the referees, the marshals lined up there. One of the athletes there, Max, we just saw was the athlete who I was able to train with in the training hall yesterday. Yes. He, uh, coach of Team Kyrgyzstan, or at least one of the Kyrgyzstan coaches, and uh, he saw me in there picking up a barbell, he came over and joined me, showed me some videos of, of his athletic achievement, a 155 snatch in the 75 kilo category from, I suppose that must have been in the 90s, that was when the 75 kilo category was yeah. around, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and a 200 kilo clean jerk in the 77 kilo category also. So. We have about seven and a half minutes until we're going to see the opening attempt from this men's 73 kilo category. Uh, that looks like it's going to be from the Kazakh lifter, 8 Bay, who has been in 120 kilos. He's actually one of three lifters in this category who have never competed internationally. And it's going to be an interesting session. Six athletes only. There were originally seven, but one of the Saudi Arabian lifters uh, pulled out. Abdul Rahman decided not to compete. Uh, and so six athletes, three of them are about as elite as they come. Dustin Yakubov, Rizki Jinninsir, and uh, presumably Zhang Shulin. And then the other three, uh, we don't know so well. Uh, Nawaf from Saudi Arabia has snatched as much as 135 kilos, but realistically, Max, we're going to see hopefully more than one athlete get into the 50s, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Rizki push up into uh, the 160 sort of territory. Yeah, it'll be really a question of whether or not uh, Risky goes all the way. He's talked a lot about taking temps at world records uh, in the clean and jerk, so we'll see what he what he's able to do here. I think it might be a question of whether or not he's just going for the win. Is he in shape? Uh, yeah. Is he going to take shots at those? 
maybe the easier this win is for him, if if that is the case, then uh, we might get to see a big lift there. And we also have no idea uh, about what's going to happen, you know, against uh, Zhang Shulin. So, yeah, he certainly is an here. unknown. Yeah. Interestingly, I've seen all of these three athletes training a fair amount in the training hall over this last week. At one point, we had Dostin Yakubov of Uzbekistan and uh, Zhang Shulin of China in the training hall at the same time, performing the same exercise at the same time. Uh, and it happened to be the front squat. So, of course, Zhang Shulin showed off his incredible strength, which I think he might have done to regain a little bit of uh, pride having missed a 140 kilo clean. Yeah. Which um, <laughs> was obviously just a little bit of a mistake. There are a few cameras on him all at once. I'm partly to blame for that. Uh, maybe uh, it overwhelmed him, but he missed the clean, came back, of course, and he made it. Um, but uh, he then worked up to that 210 kilo pause front squat. Dostin Yakubov clean and jerked 140 first time, obviously, as you'd expect. He's a man who's snatched more than that multiple times in competition, as the Chinese lifter we see on the screen there. Uh, but then I think Dostin Yakubov sort of fired up by the front squat prowess of the Chinese lifter, worked up to 200 kilos, just to let him know that he's also pretty strong in the legs. So there we have Zhang Shulin. He just snatched 80 kilos. But here's the guy who I think is probably the top runner. It's Rizki Jinyan Sia. To his right, his father. Uh, to his left, his coach. His mother is also in the back room. Both his mother and father help him out in the training hall. They help just load his weights, tell him what to do. Uh, but he is the... Well, I mean, he's got so many credentials. It's, uh, it's almost unbelievable for an athlete of his age. He's the Asian junior champion. He's the 2021 and 2022 junior world champion. Um, and he's medaled, you know, most recently he took the silver medal at the 31st Southeast Asian Games. So that was as an 81 kilo lifter. He just didn't bother cutting down. He weighed incredibly light at 76 kilos. So five kilos underweight. And when he was there, he was able to hit an enormous 197 kilo clear and jerk. That's a kilo below Shi Ziyong's world record in the 73 kilo category. We know that that record is a weight that's on Rizki's mind. Whether or not he'll be in a position to go for it today, we don't know. There's a nice 100 kilo power snatch from Zhang Shulin. A little bit of chalk there for Dostin Yakubov. We saw him in the 67 kilo category in uh, December in his home nation at the World Championships where he took the gold medal. That was, as far as I'm aware, his second international win. He went 144-180. 180, 180, I mean, that's an enormous clean and jerk at 67. Now up at 76. You know, we might see him push up towards the 90s. He's definitely one of the uh, few who are going to be able to challenge Rizki in that clean and jerk. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. We'll have a bunch of lifters probably in that 180-plus range, at least driving into that number at the end. Yeah. So it'll be kind of interesting to see if that pushes Risky or if he just ends up, you know, kind of being conservative to stay out of, you know, harm's way and potentially not uh, not walk away with a clean and jerk medal as well or a gold medal in the yeah. clean and jerk. Mm -hmm. Now, there we just saw Eit Bay snatching. I actually missed what was on the bar there. He's the Kazakh lifter. He's making his international debut here uh, in Manama, Bahrain. And what a session to do it. I mean, only six athletes in the category. It's going to be fast paced. You've got junior world record holders. You've got new strong athletes. You've got guys like Dostin Yakubov who've been competing internationally since 2011. It's, uh, it's going to be a pretty tough session for him. Max, as a coach in the back room, what changes when you find out, okay, there's not 10 athletes here, there's six. Yeah, you've just got to be a lot more on your game because things are going to go really quickly. You have everyone here close to each other with, with weights. Uh, a, few, a, few, a few changes, and you could go from being five or six attempts out or right. seven attempts to being basically the next guy. So really going to have to be aware that they're all probably warming up basically at the same time because, you know, the numbers they're taking are all right on top of each other. Uh-huh. Doesn't Look. give you any leeway. No. little glance to the camera there for... Jiang Shulin is probably not really used to warming up for a competition with the cameras on in the back room. He's competed at national competitions in China for the last few years. There's Rizki now at 100 kilos, it looks like. I saw him a few times 
snatching 112 kilos. One time he just power snatched it for a few and that's all he did for the day. The other time he worked up to 140 kilos in the snatch. It was very, very comfortable lift. He made it for a few singles, but he hit 112 on the way up. And eventually we said to him, why 112? And he said, it's 70%. You yeah. thought, 70% <laughs> of what? And we worked it out, 70% of 160, which is the weight that he uh, made in training recently. And it looked very comfortable in training. I'm not sure if you saw that one, Max. I put it in that, did. that short video that I made about him. Um, yeah. But that's not the most he's ever done. So that 60, 160 kilos, it's not a max. It's sort of a, I don't know, is it an opener? Is it a second attempt? It's 70% of something. You know, it's interesting, too, because we see, and we don't know if that's just, uh, you know, perhaps uh, what he chose to go that day, but mm -hmm. uh, knowing the exact percentage, he may have a very regimented training regime in which they've kind of got those things planned out. He knows exactly what intensity is each day, and he's, he's taken them. Whereas some of these other athletes, we, you know, maybe they go by a lot more feel. Maybe they're taking weights just kind of uh, <laughs> as they see fit or maybe kind of just kind of putting together a training program on the spot. Uh, in some cases, it seems like we've seen some interesting warm-ups in the back or interesting training sessions going on. Mm -hmm. But for him to know exactly that, he seems very methodical and he knows exactly what he's doing. So the first attempt is underway of this men's 73-kilo category. Uh, we have the international debut now of the young Kazakh, Ait Bay, coming out 120 kilos. Kazakhstan has done pretty well at these championships, uh, better than they've done in recent years. They had a bit of a drop-off, of course, after their uh, world championship dominance back in 2014, but they're certainly building back up. We've already seen Ali Chonti take a medal in the men's 55s. Zulfir Chinchan, of course, took the gold medal in the women's 55s. And now we get to see this international opener for Ait Bay. Very strong. Okay, that was pretty confident opener there. Yeah, looks like he has ample strength for yeah. <laughs> going up from there. And we've seen a lot of different body types for the Kazakh team. There was a younger Kazakh woman, I can't remember her name, but she was, uh, I think she was maybe just 17 years old. She was yes. a taller, slimmer athlete. Then, of course, yesterday we had Anatoly, the men's 67 kilo lifter, who had incredibly strange technique. Yes. Uh, bent arms, internally rotated, caught things almost yeah. on vertical shins. Yeah, really long legs, really short torso, and, yeah. and a, an interesting lockout, to say the least. Yeah. But then we see Eipai and uh, Chin Chanlo share very similar proportions. Right. Yeah, a little bit more traditional weightlifting proportions here. And once again, he joins the ranks of weightlifters with tremendous facial hair. 125 kilos loaded. Looks like he's going to be following himself, I think. We can uh, take a quick look at the scoreboard so you can see what we're seeing here. 130 kilos, the opening attempt, it looks like, for Noah from Saudi Arabia, who I just saw in the back room hit 120. And then, of course, Chen Wang Heng at 130 kilos. He's also making his international debut. Uh, we've seen him in the training hall a fair bit. He looks to be in good shape. In fact, he has some of the nicest technique I've seen. He actually, Max, is one of the lifters, uh, Chen Wang Heng from Taipei, who I found on the third day of being in the training hall, my right ear was beginning to hurt from the loud noise, the dropping of the bars and everything when you were in and amongst it. And his lifting, particularly in the split jerk, was causing me real pain because his front foot oh. stepped out so fast, uh, he really slammed onto the platform. Uh, and it was actually not particularly pleasant. It was a real juxtaposition because his technique was <laughs> so good I could barely take my eyes off him. Yeah, it's kind of funny. If you've never actually been to a meet like this or at this level, uh, to see the speed yeah. and the power of these athletes is absolutely incredible. When you're standing you know, just feet from somebody uh, power snatching 150 kilos right. easily or you know, clean jerking 200 with, with no difficulty, uh, and the speed they move is just incredible. Yeah, I mean, even today we've seen some huge lifts in the training hall. Earlier we watched Lesman Paredes power snatching 150 kilos, doubles, Gorman Asin clean and jerking 200 kilos. It's incredible stuff here. Now, that looked to me like he almost set up with his shins really vertical, and that might have put him in a bit of an awkward position pulling off the ground. If we see a replay, 
it almost looked as if he didn't get on top of the bar properly. It's very important. Yeah, that's not really the best angle for it. It's very <laughs> important that, uh, you know, we talked about this last session. It's, it's critical that your start position and everything that happens immediately off the ground is perfect because that sets up everything else in the lift. Right. If your trajectory is off just a tiny bit in the start, the bar is going to be in the wrong place overhead. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like he's going to have to follow himself. He's got a two-minute clock. Uh, and then we have, as mentioned before, two athletes coming out at 130 kilos. We were able to have sort of short little interviews with Dostin Yokubov and Rizki Junasir uh, over the last few days. So we'll go through some of those potentially during that halfway point in between the snatch and the clean and jerk. Though, as we've seen from some of these sessions, depending on how exciting the snatches are, we don't even get to those interviews because all we want to talk about is the snatch portion of the competition. We have best snatches in the field of 145 kilos from Dostin Yakubov, but of course he was a, uh, I think he's actually a 69 kilo lifter potentially when he did that, it was so long ago. Uh, and then 157 kilos, Rizki hit as a junior at the World Championships, which he won the junior championships with. And of course we know he can lift even more. He actually, I sort of pushed him to tell me what are your actual best numbers. And he uh, told me that with straps, he has snatched 170 kilos, which is a kilo over Shi Young's world record. Let's see if he sets up a little bit differently here. Much better, yeah. Brilliant lifting there from the young Kazakh lifter. Max, what differences did you see in either the start position or just throughout that pull that allowed him to make that lift? Yeah, well, the first thing was his demeanor. He looked like he was a little bit more calm for that one. The, the second attempt, he kind of maybe took for granted, rushed out. Yeah. Uh, this one just looked a little better, and he definitely looked like he had his balance in the middle of his foot a little bit better at the start there. Right. Now, for those of you who were tuning in for the first time, probably noticed the uh, incredible backdrop of this competition. Uh, we're not quite sure whether the backdrop resembles Star Wars or a scene from Tron more, but it <laughs> certainly doesn't resemble anything from this world. Okay, here's the opening attempt now for Chen Rang Heng. 130 kilos. Uh, his first ever lift on an international platform. Very smooth. Yeah, that's not difficult at all. A very, very confident opener. In fact, we've seen, Max, a few athletes who haven't competed internationally before turn up here. Uh, and I think he's probably the highest caliber of those athletes. Certainly the nicest technique of anyone who's making their debut. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen quite a few people debuting here. It's, uh, almost we've kind of mentioned this a few times back and forth. Not necessarily that they're, these are the B athletes or B team athletes, but generally a lot of new athletes here, people kind of entering the international stage for the first time. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. We'll see, maybe some of these people will become those icons of the future. Right. Yeah, we mentioned this a few sessions ago, but there was a time in 2009 where you would flick on the men's 77s and you would have seen the debut of a uh, Lu Zhaojun. You'd have had no idea that he was gonna go on to become a three-time Olympic champion looking for his fourth. And it may well be that some of these athletes, uh, the person I'm eyeing up certainly is, is Rizki Junisir based on his track record as a junior. Uh, they may turn into some of the real top weightlifting legends of our time. Here's the opening attempt now, 133 kilos for NAF from Saudi Arabia. A little bit more muscular than the two uh, Saudi athletes that we've seen so far, Mansour in the 55s and Siraj in the 61s. Yeah. Very strong snatch. Very quick. The Saudi team is getting an enormous amount of support this whole competition. We've yeah. just had a lot of audience uh, participation in their lifts, maybe even to the point of uh, all the way through the snatch there. Obviously, Saudi Arabia is not too far away. No, not so at all. Pretty easy for them to get here. 
You can probably drive to the Saudi border within sort of maybe half an hour. Oh, here. maybe if even. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're actually closer to a lot of countries than you uh, than you might think. Miso told me that he drove here from his home in Qatar in about four hours, which uh, I did not expect. But you know, I looked up on the map, and it's actually not that far at all. Yeah. Okay, so you can see on the scoreboard here we have a uh, couple of attempts at 135 kilos coming up. Noaf's obviously going to bump up shortly. That will probably bring out the opening attempt of Dostoy Nokubov. A little light, I would say, Max. I'm sort of surprised that he's opening as light as this. However, we know he's a clean and jerk specialist. That's where his strength lies. Strong legs, great jerk. If it wasn't for a strong clean and jerk, he wouldn't have won uh, so many medals internationally as he has done. Getting the typical uh, ear-squeezing treatment there. We've seen that a lot here. And it's uh, actually worked a few yes, times. Yes, a lot yeah. of uh, facial and ear manipulation from the coaches. <laughs> he made 144 at his last competition. That was the World Championships where he was a lighter 67 kilo lifter. Beautiful start. Yeah, very really nice open. snatch. Yeah, that's tremendous stuff. Even though he is a clean jerk specialist, his snatch technique is excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we did uh, we did catch up with him, and we asked him what the most he'd made in training was recently. He said to us that he clean and jerked 190 kilos. That's an enormous lift uh, for anyone in this weight category. In fact, that's the kind of lift that would have... Well, it would have taken, if you could do individual medals at the Olympics, that would have been silver in the cleaner jerk. Uh, She's Young hit 198 kilos, and then we had three athletes hit 190 kilos. He would have been one of them. At the World Championships, the winning cleaner jerk was 192 kilos from an athlete that we're going to see tomorrow in the men's 81s. Looks like he just rushed that, mm -hmm. got behind the bar there in the middle of the pole and with no power at the end. I'm sure some of the listeners, the viewers who've been with us during this week have heard you say a few times, Max, that someone got behind the bar a little bit too early. You just explain what it is that you mean by that and, and what exactly that sort of ends up causing. Yeah, as the bar passed his knees, he transitions into that final extension uh, it happens a little bit too early. He starts right. to make that transition a little bit low, and the bar starts to decelerate a little too much, and it doesn't move back as far as it should, causing the bar to either lose power and height, and then it ends up in front of him, uh, or just uh, creates a much more difficult pull at the top. He can't really get the bar back behind the head, so you catch it, and you end up falling in forward. Right. Yeah, it's one of the, uh, one of the classic oh. technical mistakes that we see at this competition. Uh, in the snatch, but we have seen a fair few athletes actually come back and uh, make the required uh, correction. In fact, so many times that we've actually remarked that they must be listening to us in the back room because it seems to be that whenever we critique some technique, we see an improvement. So, yeah, logically, I think we have to uh, assume that that's our benefit. It, it checks out. Yeah, I, I would say that's true. I said that makes sense. Okay, so one minute 20. He's not going to take the full two minutes rest. He doesn't need it. Seems confident. He's yeah. got a big smile. I think yeah, he knows he exactly what confident. he did. Yeah. Well, he was listening to us, of course. So. Uh, maybe he just jumped on the feed there. Yeah. <laughs> got some coaching advice. Yeah, his opening snatch looked very strong, so that second one was just not there. A little bit off on the timing. Now he does have the presence of an athlete who's competed many times internationally, but this is his debut. It looked like a nicer yeah. pull, didn't it? Yeah, I made the correction for sure, but still just not quite enough. Yeah, you have to wonder if the uh, the five kilo jump from first to second attempt was just a little bit too much. Yeah, uh, we've seen some 
Interesting attempt jumps here. We've seen a lot of larger jumps than, than what I would say is typical at like the World Championships. Yep. Uh, and that could be indicative that these athletes are maybe a little bit newer, so they're taking lighter openers, uh, then taking bigger jumps after that, where a lot of times we see athletes maybe taking just a few kilos between first, second, and third. Right. Yeah, in the men's 61s, three athletes back to back to back made six kilo jumps. Yeah. Two of them were successful, and the third one was a world record attempt, and it was not far off. That's the second attempt now for Nawaf. This will be a two kilo personal record for him if he makes it. Oh. Brilliant stuff. Easily, easily made that one very strong. Tremendous amount of speed on that turnover. You can see he barely moved his feet as all, at all. Now here's something interesting. The Chinese lifter, Zhang Shu Lin, has dropped his opener from 140 to 138. Now, I wonder, does that mean that he felt a little bit off in the back room, or does that just mean that the coaches, they looked around, they saw that Nawaf did 37, they saw that Yakubov did 35, and they thought, you know what, we don't need to risk a 40 opener. Let's just go 138 and just settle into the competition. This will be very telling of what his abilities are. Mm -hmm. This first international snatch that we've seen. Certainly got the strongest legs in the group, but does he have the best technique? Pretty solid snatch. Pretty solid. Again, we've seen some of these Chinese lifters just look a little shaky. There's a lot of pressure on them. You know, they're... Uh, they're so a lot of um, teammates are very highly respected. Yeah, they do a lot of big lifts, and they want to they want to show up and you know do them proud. Potentially fighting two battles here, right? One in this competition, and then one back home, trying yeah. to impress the people they need to to sort of solidify maybe further further selection in other meets. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to quite be able to impress the, uh, the Chinese star force, be able to force him to sub him in for Xi Ziyong, but. Who knows? Here's Dustin Yakubov. Now, these are sorts of jumps, Max, that you and I traditionally quite like to see. Mm. Three kilos, nothing too crazy, making lifts. Very nice. Yeah, that was and just as comfortable as his first. In fact, you almost wonder if he could or should have made a slightly bigger jump on that second attempt. That was very comfortable. Yeah, it's a, it's a sign of a very experienced, very quality lifter, a very high cal uh, qualification lifter, to be able to open very close to your best, be successful. Uh, you know, if he only has to take a spread of maybe six kilos, it really sets you up well to be in a place where even if you miss one lift, you're not losing a lot on your total. Right. Uh, so it's critical for that. We've seen that with athletes snatching in the 180 kilo range, mm -hmm. taking only three three kilo jumps there. Uh, it's it's just absolutely critical to be able to compete when the competition is so tight. Right. Okay, so final attempt, just making a, a two kilo jump from 137 to 139. This is gonna be a four kilo personal record here for Noaf. Oh, that is just Perfect. brilliant. And there we go. There's the backflip. He stuck the landing, too. Fantastic. And I just got the thumbs up uh, from Dan, the cameraman, that he did indeed catch the backflip. So we're going to have to post that to our Instagram account later. Fantastic stuff. And Max, might I say, one of the better backflips that we've seen in competition. Yeah, absolutely executed flawlessly. Yeah. You see here, stuck the landing perfectly. His feet oh, moved more wow. on the backflip, obviously, than the snatch. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So he can triple extend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastic stuff there. I actually mentioned this before we flew out to Asia. I said to the whole team, we have to make sure that we always carry on filming each lift for at least five seconds because at some point, someone, it's the law of weightlifting, Someone will do a backflip, and if you don't catch it, you won't ever get over it. The one that got away. Right. So here we are with another two kilo jump. Yep. They're I just playing a battle maybe for second. I wonder yeah. if they, they sort of know that Risky's going to 
run away with this one. I feel like that may be the case. These coaches are being as realistic as possible here and, and really locking in that silver. It's a oh. weight that he's made many That's times. Brilliant snatch, yeah. And he makes it again, and he looks pretty fired up. He's an athlete who's always pretty cerebral in the training hall, uh, as are actually most of the Uzbek team. There aren't many athletes who get too fired up. We just saw yesterday his teammate, Akamjan Ergashev, take the gold medal in the men's 67s. Uh, he's always a little bit more fired up, but it's nice to see uh, Yakubov getting a little bit more passionate about these lifts. No doubt he'll really have to switch it on as well in the clean and jerks. So this is interesting. Zhang's taken 143, so he's going to put himself here in a pretty strong three kilo lead. Max, I want to say that every Chinese lifter all the way from the 45 kilo women and up have taken a five kilo jump between their first and second Solid attempt. Snatch. Brilliant lifting that. Looked a little bit nicer than the first. I mean, he can probably take another five kilos if yeah. he wants to. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all for him to take 148 on that third. Another thing worth mentioning is that for him to have even taken that 143 meant that Rizki Jinansir had moved up, and he had. He went from 140 to 145. So I wonder if we are going to finally see him. I mean, we may see him come out at 145 kilos, but again, that doesn't really do Rizki justice. Yeah. I don't kind of remember the last time he opened up anywhere near as light as 145 kilos. He's a guy who's he's a 150 type of opener, uh, always looking to push up towards 160. And I, I think today might be the day he does it. As I mentioned before, you know, he's been snatching 112 in the training hall on his way up to heavyweights. He told us it was 70% of 160. Clearly, he has that weight in his mind. It's be a three kilo personal record in competition for him if he makes it. Yeah, he seems like the kind of athlete who, once he becomes set on something, he is absolutely determined to do it. Yeah. We'll see what happens here. You've got a change, I imagine, here coming in for Rizky. Possibly. No, I think he's going to come out. Is he? No, he's moved to up. Oh, he's gone up. see 146 now for Shu Lin. So Rizki wants to win on his opener, it would look like, to allow himself, to afford himself the opportunity to make the required jumps, maybe well, to get to that one. They have another change here. What's Shu Lin asking for? We're seeing some coaching. Oh, oh he's coming out. So we'll see there, this one. There was a change, I think. I believe they're all moving around. I saw the coach there. 148 now for Shulin, so 47 for Rizky. I have to believe he's going to go up from here. I don't think he wants 47. I think he wants to guarantee that win on the opener. So here we go in the crowd. Some of Rizky's nope, fans. Yeah, here he's he comes out. out now. Now, he might look like a skinnier athlete than some of these others, but let me tell you, he's pretty muscular. The crowd is absolutely electric. There is a huge Indonesian contingency for him. I think I just saw Lude Lin in the crowd as well, watching on, watching his teammate. I saw him in the training hall earlier, snatching 140 kilos. But now, Rizki Jinansir, opening attempt, 147 kilos, just 19 years of age. Two-time junior world champion. He left it a little bit out front, yeah. but he's got the strength and speed to you know, make that not look too taxing. Yeah. The ever showman there, giving everyone a little bit of a bow. Right. Very polite. I was in the back room with him uh, about half an hour, well, it can't have been half an hour ago, we were live half an hour ago. Uh, probably 35 minutes ago, just before we went live, I went into the back room uh, just to wish him well, and his one of his coaches was live on Instagram, and uh, all of a sudden, before I knew it, he turned the camera on me, and suddenly I was live on on the, on his on his Instagram account as well. Oh, they're pulling him off because it's technically still risky. They have not put in the change yet. And let's get the scoreboard up so you can see the confusion here. Risky hasn't made the change. Presumably, Zhang Shulin can just wait there because the change is going to come in. There it is. That's the change. So, Max, you have to imagine that if Zhang Shulin misses this, Rizki is going to take quite a big jump if he wants to get towards that 160 mark. Yeah. I think, I think he will. Whereas if he makes it, we'll see how much does Rizki fancy risking it <laughs> for a uh, heavier second attempt. 
Uh, the second attempt was stronger than the first. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the middle of the pole. Oh, the like. Indonesians were <laughs> just very happy in the crowd. Yelling, chanting, cheering the missed attempt. I love to see that in the, uh, yeah, in the not competition. Not we're too common too we see that. No. But I think they really just want the show. They want to see the bigger number here. He, uh, he had a bit of a sticky foot there. I don't know if you noticed his yeah. right foot was just a little bit, you know, it didn't quite move as it normally did. Landed on his toes and rocked onto his flat foot, which not the way you want to do things in weightlifting. So that means, Max, that we actually know the medals for the snatchers despite the two attempts that remain. The gold medal is going to go to Rizky Jr. 147 kilos. The silver at 143 to Zhang Shulin. The bronze, as we thought, Dostin Kubov. So, like we said at the start of this competition, those are going to be the three front runners. It's just about how far ahead can Rizky Jin and Sia go? He's taking a five kilo jump here. Now, he did look like he rushed that first one a little bit, and it was a tiny bit forward when he caught it. Yeah. Could be that 147 is just a very lightweight form. <laughs> All right. Much stuff. better attempt. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as that bar passed the uh, yeah. past the knees, you could just see it come in just a little bit more than it did on the opener. What a phenomenal lift! And I have to say, incredibly friendly athlete. Yeah. I spoke to him a lot uh, in the training hall. He was very willing to talk to us about his training, about various things. Uh, very sort of mild mannered young lifter, but just absolutely brutal on the platform. Yeah, that 152 was was just flawless. Yeah. So, so strong, so smooth. The question in my mind now, Max, is what is he going to go up to? Because he made a five kilo jump. If he makes another five, it'll be 157. That's a weight he's already hit twice in competition. He's never surpassed 157. Will he take something under it and just resign to the fact that he won't? He's put 158 okay, on the 158. Bar. He's looking to beat his own junior world record. We probably should have mentioned that he owns those uh, when we started this session. He owns the junior world records in this category: 157 snatch, 194 clean and jerk, and 349 in the total. So this is going to be a pretty big moment here at the Asian Championships. The world record at the senior level, of course, held by Shi Ziyong, 169 kilos, which he has moved up single-handedly, I think. The sort of inauguration of this weight category, the 73s, the world, the world standard was 160 kilos. Shi Ziyong's then made world records at 61, 64, 65, 68, and 69. So, actually, this lift, 158, is only two kilos below what the world standard was just a few years ago. All right, crowd's chanting. This is an enormous moment for the young athlete. A junior world record attempt for Petrizky Jinnensir. Absolutely huge lift here. And if he can make it look like he did the second, I think he can do this. Much nicer technique on that second attempt. Uh, just a little bit too heavy, maybe. Yeah, just a hair too much. Had a great start, great pull, but it just sort of wasn't quite high enough. Not quite there. He's certainly going to live to fight another day. No doubt we'll see him at the World Championships at the uh, start of December. They're going to be held in Colombia. But this time, that record's going to elude him. He does still have an opportunity to make a new record in the uh, clean and jerk, though. 194 kilos is his junior world record, so another kilo might work. So very successful session as well. A lot of made lifts there. We only had five misses in the whole session. Wow. Yeah, I don't think we've seen such a uh, high percentage of makes. A third of the athletes going three for 
Three for three there. A great backflip as well. The crowd getting involved. I don't think we've seen uh, so much excitement in the, uh, in the stadium. Well, certainly not during the snatches. We've seen some pretty incredible clean and jerk sessions, but uh, a great session so far. There's going to be a 10-minute break now uh, before the clean and jerks get underway. So while we wait, let's take a little bit of a look at some of these responses that we got from Dostin Yakubov, who, as it stands, sits in uh, bronze, I believe, at 140 kilos in the snatch. He told us that 2022, his training has been... It's been good. He said it's just normal. Uh, he did make, however, as I mentioned earlier, 190 kilos in the clean and jerk, which is only 8 kilos under Shi Young's world record. And for an athlete whose max only just moved up to that 73 kilo category, uh, bodes pretty well. How long would you expect for an athlete? You know, he's gone from 67 to 73, 6 kilos in body weight. How long before he really maximizes the increase in strength that he'll probably see from that increase in body weight. You know, it's really going to depend on how efficient their technique is. Somebody who's got really consistent, solid technique, very good in the lifts, uh, we would expect to see that kind of gain, you know, that transfer a little bit quicker. Right. Somebody who maybe uh, is still sorting out technique or a little bit rougher, uh, they may gain strength even faster, but uh, we might not see it transfer as, as readily. So ultimately it depends on that. Well, Dostin Akubov probably is the most experienced athlete here in the field, so Technique already pretty nice, as we saw there in the snatch. It's got a fantastic clean. Uh, jerk, pretty nice also. Uh, he mentioned that training has been very intense and difficult this year. Uh, he said that he made that heavy 190, and he didn't get injured from it, which he's grateful for. Uh, but he said that he's extremely serious about doing a lot of work in the gym. My kind of lifter. What, doing a lot of work in the gym? Very serious about doing a lot of work <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> so we just saw Rizki in the back room. And there we have Nawaf, who just hit... Let me just check. Was that 139 kilos he hit? That was a four kilo... Yeah, it was four kilo personal best for him. Let's just run through those numbers very quickly. Uh, we saw Ait Bay from Kazakhstan, his international debut. He went two for three, 125 kilos. Five kilos above him was Chen Wang Heng. From Taipei, 130 kilos. Uh, and then it was Nawaf with 139, Yakubov with 140, Zhang Shulin, 143, and then nine kilos ahead of the rest, Rizki Jinisir. It's uh, hard to imagine, Max, that anyone's going to be able to catch up with Rizki, especially knowing yeah. just how strong he is in the clean and jerk. Yeah, really, the only thing we have to wonder here is what is Zhang Shulin's clean and jerk abilities? We know he's incredibly strong. We've seen his squatting. We've seen some of his training. Uh, but the real question here is what is he going to clean and jerk? Is he going to be able to push Rizki at all? Uh, or is he going to be maybe just taking his, his three attempts, uh, searching for that silver medal? Yeah, the 73 kilo category is pretty, uh, pretty stacked heading into the Olympics. It's one of the five categories that remained uh, as an Olympic category. So more and more athletes from the 67s and the 81s are going to be funneling up or down into it. We know that there are some 81s working their way down right now. Liu Zhaojun is one of them. There'll be 67s moving up. So things are going to change probably over the next year or so. I imagine the World Championships is going to be pretty incredible. Uh, to see sort of what happens in that 73 kilo category. Max, one of the things we noticed actually, you just mentioned that we we don't yet know the kind of clean and jerk shape that Zhang Shulin is in, uh, is that a lot of the Chinese team that have turned up here have been fantastic snatches, some of them attempting world records, but they're just a little bit lower on the clean and jerk. And the thing that sort of separates them from the A team in China is not their ability to attempt and make world record snatches, it's their ability to uh, attempt world record clean and jerks. Right, and obviously the most important number is the total. Uh, so we would it be surprising to see uh, lifters that are capable of a very big snatch, a very big clean and jerk, uh, not on the A team. Uh, so you know we might we might be seeing maybe the first of those trainees that has a little bit stronger clean and jerk. Uh, Zhang only snatched 143 here, but he's got a 180 opener listed. Right. Uh, so potentially he has a, a pretty solid clean and jerk. Yeah, that's the joint heaviest opener there, along with Rizki Jinsir. Of course, things might change. 
There was a 140 cleaner joke in the back room there by Ike Bait. He's put in 160 kilos. I imagine he'll take one more attempt. In fact, I think we can just see him loading 150 kilos there. He's got about four minutes until, well, four minutes until Chen Wang Heng comes out. He'll probably then be one of the next openers. So he'll rest for a few minutes, take that 150, and then probably come out at 160. Dostin Yakubov, 70 kilos. And Rizki still on the barbell. He's got plenty of time before he needs to open up. Yeah, and just like we saw in the snatch, everyone's basically going to be kind of moving at a pretty quick pace here. They didn't have a huge amount of rest. When you've only got six athletes in the session, uh, it just cuts into that rest time between snatch and clean and jerk. Right. So everyone's pretty much on the bar, getting into it right now. I don't imagine anyone's going to have any trouble, though, with conditioning. These guys are actually the absolute top of the, the pack here as far as their abilities. Yeah, and once again, probably ought to mention just how strong, uh, both in terms of how good they are, but also in terms of numbers, the Saudi team is at this competition. Of course, we are pretty close to Saudi Arabia being here in Bahrain, so not really difficult sending a full team, but also just the fact that they've got a team as big as it is. You know, they've invested recently pretty heavily into weightlifting. Uh, we have two real legends on the Saudi team, Mansour Al Salim and Siraj Al Salim, the 55 and 61, who we saw compete over the last few days. And then, of course, they're somewhat new. I mean, he's been there for over a year now. Head coach, who we've just seen on the screen there, Eduard Andruskovic, looking very nice in his new Saudi tracksuit. Certainly one of the more accomplished coaches, probably the most accomplished coach in that back room, Max. Yeah, for sure. It's interesting, Saudi team has kind of run through a few different types of coaches, different coaches. I know uh, the late Ivan Abajayev of Bulgaria was coaching there for a bit uh, many years ago. Uh, and it's interesting to see them finally, maybe now finding a coach who really is able to uh, excel within the conditions mm. they've got. So very cool to see. Yeah, there's always been a bit of a history of coaches moving from country to country in a way that we don't tend to see with athletes. Of course, occasionally it does happen with athletes, two of them competing here now for Bahrain. Lesman Paredes and Gorman Asian recently moved from <laughs> Colombia and Armenia respectively, but a little more common on the coaching side of things, Max. I know in the USA uh, there's been a bit of a history of hiring in outside coaching talent mm. back when there was more of a centralized uh, program in the USA. Yeah, they would usually populate the uh, Olympic Training Center when it existed with uh, some kind of foreign coach. We had American coaches there for a short time. We had Dragomir Sroslan in the early mid-90s. Where was he originally from? Romania. Romania, right. He was uh, coach of Niku Vlad, Niku I think. Vlad, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the most recent was Zygmunt Smaltzerts, who I think now is coaching for Norway. Yeah, he's... Uh, done phenomenally well with Norway. Yeah. Actually, we saw them at the European Championships. They're incredible. Solfred Koanda, who took the gold medal in the women's 87s, it was, it's just going from strength to strength yeah. under uh, the work from Zygmunt. A phenomenal talent she was. Yeah, she. I mean, she is so incredibly strong. Can't wait to see what she does at the World Championships. But she's also going to have to make the tough decision of the category switch. Will she go down to 81? She's already pretty lean. Or will she go up to super? It's not an easy decision to make for the 87s or on the men's side, the 109s, who are in a similar situation. And that was a beautiful push joke there from Dustin Nakubov. He's at 100 kilos. Rizki still at 70 kilos. We've got 150 on the bar there for Chen Wang Heng, who's probably going to be coming out in about 10 seconds' time for his opener at one. 150 kilos also. He's just... Has he just dropped down 10 kilos? Or did Ike Bay uh, go he, up 10 he, kilos? He dropped down 5 kilos. That's right. He, he had 155 there. Yeah, that's it. I wonder then he probably hit that 150 in the back. And maybe the coaching staff thought, you know what? Let's maybe just take that again on the platform. Let's yeah. not risk 155. He did miss two snatches. And possibly he's just not quite in the shape he wants to be here. So, the first attempt from the clean and jerk portion of this men's 73 kilo category is underway. We are live 
in Manama, Bahrain at the 2022 Asian Championships. 150 kilos for the first ever international clean and jerk of Chen Wang Hang. And he's the athlete who I saw moving incredibly well, Max, in the training hall. The speed of his jerk, the front foot, makes a Beautiful real ball. sound. Yeah. A little, bit yeah. In, a little bit forward on that jerk. A little bit forward, yeah. Definitely uh, an audible landing of that front foot and that split. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sort of grateful that I've got these giant headphones on me at the moment uh, so that that didn't cause me too much agony <laughs> when he <laughs> slapped that front foot out. Yeah, overall very solid lift. Still a little forward. He'll have to correct that on the next. I'm wondering if they dropped him down because they didn't see him maybe making uh, as big a lift. I wonder if it's because they know that he can go over 160, and once he's over 160, he gets the rest from the other two athletes. But he's going to have to follow himself on first to second, and so they wanted to give him as sort of comfortable and opener as possible. Perhaps he'll make a greater than five kilo jump here. And he has done. Yep, he's asked yep. for uh, 160 kilos. So he's made that 10 kilo jump, which is... Pretty enormous there. Yep. Three athletes now at 160. We're going to see the opening attempt of Nawaf from Saudi Arabia. Seven kilos below his personal best. Nawaf hit 167 kilos at the 2020 Asian Championships. That was held in 2021, of course. It was delayed by COVID. Now, the downside to that strategy of taking that 10 kilo jump, looking for extra time, yeah. is that both of these lifters could easily just bump one kilo and, and potentially one has. pull him out uh, with a 10 kilo jump and just a couple of minutes rest. It didn't happen here. Obviously, Ape went for it. He's going to take 160, but. Yeah. Nawaf has moved up to 163, but as you mentioned, Ape from Kazakhstan is going to come out. His international uh, debut clean and jerk also. Now, he looks like he's built to clean and jerk more so than he was to snatch. Yeah, for sure. A little bit shorter legs, longer torso, short arms. Very nice clean. Wow. Squat jerk. Didn't Power jerk. quite expect that. Yeah, we did see him in the warm-up doing that. I wasn't sure because it was just a lightweight if he was just warming up or not. That's the second uh, Kazakh. Kazakh we've seen doing a, a power jerk or a squat jerk. Uh, yeah, yesterday we yesterday. saw Anatoly Seveliev. Uh, who a completely ended different up body doing proportions. He went over 160 for sure. Uh, incredible looking athlete. Yeah. Very similar technique we mentioned to Shota Mitralidze, the Georgian 61 or 67, depending on how much food he's eaten that week, I suppose. <laughs> okay, Chen Wang Heng's going to come out now. Second attempt, 160 kilos. He's got a little bit more than the two minute rest he would have gotten if he hadn't gone so high. So. Assuming he makes this, that worked out for the best, but of course, you, you certainly can't make any assumptions at these sorts of weights. The clean was pretty solid in the last one. Very strong. It's a gorgeous technique on that clean. And a better jerk, yeah. I'd say. Got that bar behind his head a lot better. <laughs> Looks like that 10 kilo jump was a smart move. And that's the celebration of a man who isn't expecting to take a third attempt. <laughs> he looks extremely confident though. Sort of salutes the crowd, takes off his belt, swaggers off stage. Hopefully we'll see him come out. Maybe with the blues on the bar at 165. We'll have to wait and see. So the automatic increase has him at 161. After he's bumped up, I think we'll see Nawaf from Saudi Arabia come out at 163. Of course, four athletes Nawaz still yet to open. Already come onto the ramp. The weight is still at 161. No declaration's been made yet for the change for Wang Hang Chen. This has happened twice now in this session and hasn't happened at all during right. the entire competition. Now, it, it is the fault of... Uh, of Taipei. Sa Saudi Arabia to, to oh. assume that the weight has been changed, but it All hasn't. Right. 
but depending on what's going on in the back, sometimes there's a little bit of delay or a lag. You know, they're still doing things by pen and paper and yeah. have to basically phone it in ahead of time. Going to do a very quick brush of the platform to make sure that it's ready for him. And with a yell and a cheer from the crowd, Noaf's going to come out 163 kilos, four kilos below his best. He made 167 at the Asian Championships. Most recently, he competed at the World Championships last December. There, he made 165 kilos. So this is a pretty heavy opener for him. Very Apparently strong not. Pull. Yeah. Oh, so very easy. powerful jerk too. Does a great job of getting that back foot down and just driving his whole body slightly forward to that bar. Really, really nice technique. Yeah, there's a whole lot more there on the tank. He's excited. Incredibly easy stand there in the clean. Wide jerk. Yeah, comfortable opener for him. Yeah, singlet almost resembles one of the old uh, wrestling singlets. Uh -huh. Slightly higher on the thigh, a little, little higher, bit deeper yeah. cut. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more sort of serratus showing off. Sort of close to the uh, old Alexia of singlet. <laughs> the right. Old, the, the old woolies, they were made out of wool. Yeah, yeah. Not the most comfortable singlet. I mean, for a man of the size of Alexiev, the man percentage of, of uh, advanced size, the <laughs> the percentage of skin on show of total body was was worryingly large at points. Uh, so singlets were very, very small, very skimpy yeah. for a man who weighed 160, 170 kilos. Possibly not re not responsible for much viewership. <laughs> okay, so as we had sort of hoped. The Blues are out for the return, the final lift here uh, of the athlete from Taipei. So if he makes it, his international debut would have gone down with a four for six performance. Just made the one snatch at 130, but so far, clean and jerks looking very strong. He's got great technique in the clean. Just a oh. tough pull, yeah. wasn't it? A little bit slow. Yeah. It's really important that athletes are capable of moving well when the bar is not moving fast. It looked like that bar was just a little bit heavy and slightly forward, and he didn't have the patience to get it to where he needed. Caught it just a little bit forward in the shoulders. Yeah, pretty strong in uh, in the squat. We've seen him in training, but probably a little bit more work on the pull. Max, we've commented a few times about the incredible pulling training that we've seen particularly from Taipei, but also just in general from the athletes in Asia. There was one session in particular where we looked around us and almost on every platform there was a type of pull, some sort of variation, a low hang, high pull, a snatch deadlift, yeah. yeah, pause pulls. It was very interesting to see some athletes and coaches emphasizing a extension at the hip, others emphasizing staying over the bar still in the finish. It was really quite remarkable. So the second 10 kilo jump hit, 160 to 170 for Ipe Bay of Kazakhstan. So fast under the bar. Oh, just a little bit forward on his toes there in that squat jerk. Yep. Now I wonder if uh, Nawaf is going to bump up a kilo and steal the clock from Ipe Bay. Both of them currently on 170 kilos. Let's, Let's see. see. Will he come out for this or will he go up a kilo? No, he is going to come out for He's it. He's going to come out, yep. And this is Max, three kilos more than we saw him do the last Asian Championships. It's five kilos more than he did at the World Championships. This is a huge personal record for Nawaf. He looks to be in incredible shape today. Strong clean, better than the first even. Wow, 
Can he hold on? He can. Great the crowd like it. Oof. Hard fought lift. That lockout was a little bit suspect. One of the one of the refs gave it a red light as well, so mm -hmm. he's gonna have to clean that up a little bit more to make more than that 170. Now it seems pretty much set in terms of the uh, the scoreboard that it's it's probably gonna be impossible for him to get a medal in the total. The three top snatches still all yet to open the clean and jerk. And he can't really get overtaken by anyone else behind him. So this final attempt is is for him, which makes me wonder, are we gonna get three reds on the bar for Nawaf? Will we see a 175, or is that gonna be just too much for him? Before we find out, it's 171. He bumped up a kilo. It's Ait Bay from Kazakhstan for his final attempt. His last clean was very strong. Jerk was super close, just a little bit forward. A little bit tougher clean than his second attempt. Uh, he's and maybe passing out there. For the first time, Max, we mentioned that we hadn't seen this yet. That's the first athlete who we've seen not attempt the jerk due to uh, lack of oxygen. You know, it's very easy to get lightheaded. You've got the carotid artery right there in the way. It's a really <laughs> unfortunate place for. Uh, yeah, for it to be have been uh, it's unfortunate evolution play. put that that artery there. They didn't understand, or it didn't understand how important the clean and jerk is going right, to be. Right, exactly. They didn't know that it was going to become such an important part of human experience. The uh, the heavy clean to jerk. So, Max, I think he's going to do it. Nawaz put in 176 even. Wow. So that's going to call out Dostin Yakubov at 175. He's okay. bumped up now to 76. I think uh, Nawaf really is hoping to get a medal here in the clean and jerk. Yeah. He's got, he's basically got nothing to lose here by, no. by taking the largest clean and jerk he can. He's gonna have to go for 77 though, if he wants to do it. Now, Dostin Yakubov told us that he made 190 kilos in training uh, this last year. His best clean and jerk in competition is 186 kilos. So this 176, I can't imagine it's gonna cause him too much of a problem. They've actually misspelled his name on the little pop-up on the screen there. Beautiful pull. Yeah, stunning. Oh, and it really bends that back knee. Yeah. Solid jerk though, just an overall very, very comfortable lift for him. Right, there's no messing about in between the, uh, the clean and the jerk there. The Uzbeks really put in a lot of work on the clean and jerk. They have some great snatches, you know. Uh, Akbar Drive can snatch with anyone. Uh, Zafarjanov can, can snatch. A lot of them are great snatches, but it's the clean and jerk really seems to be where they excel. Nuradinov holds the world record in the 109s. Akbar Drive, enormous clean and jerker as well. Ergashev won it yesterday with his clean and jerks. Dostin Yakubov's got that great 190. Yeah. We see some interesting movement here. We see Zheng Shulin drop down to 178 for his opener. We're seeing, here we go, this is it. He really wants to go for a medal in the clean and jerk. If he makes this, he will at least momentarily be in a medal position for the clean and jerk. Max, this is 10 kilos more than we've ever seen him make in competitions. 10 wow. kilos up on what he hit at the last Asking for the crowd to quiet down. Strong enough to clean it, I think. Beautiful. Wow. Can he hold I it? I think he's going to get called for a press out. And another backflip. And <laughs> he sticks it. But he gets the no lift. They're gonna do a challenge on that. Oh, for sure, that is but offensive to the backflip. But Max, I have to say, I saw it from the front angle on yeah. one of our screens that we had. Well, you he know, caught they, it on slightly soft elbows before he extended it out. Coaches always tell you, athlete, to sell it, and I don't think you could sell it any harder <laughs> than that backflip. So. Yeah, it's a lot better than the technique that some athletes use, where they just look confused and they wait as though they know yeah. that they just pressed it out. He sold that better than. Uh, 
Maybe they're well, maybe they're uh, wondering about the backflip. It was a good backflip though. Maybe we should give it to him. Yeah. I think this ref here is con contemplating. He'd have landed with his feet together. I think they might have given him three whites on that one. Let's see. Oh, so the challenge card has gone in. I don't, this is a terrible replay. We Zhang Shu Lin's trying to get on the platform. I don't know if Team China realizes. It's a pretty subtle, it's a pretty subtle elbow movement there. Well, Gregor from ATG clearly thinks it's a good lift. I just saw him gesture. But how about that backflip, though? Well, it's a confirmed no lift, unfortunately. But you know what? Nawaf has lifted incredibly well. 139 was a four kilo personal record. 170 a three kilo. And he took a shot at a medal as well. Here's the opening attempt now, 178 for Zhang Shulin. Pretty solid clean. Got some strong legs on him. He's jerking from the fingertips here. Now, solid. One of the few Chinese weightlifters on the men's side <laughs> to do the split jerk. Of course, Li Fa Bin, the world record holder in the snatch and total in the 61s is a split jerk as well. In fact, you know, I noticed he did this on his first snatch too. The down signal was given, the buzzers went, and he waited. Yeah, he looked a bit confused. Yeah. Uh, like wondering uh, maybe what he was supposed to do there. It's been given. <laughs> 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 what do I do at this point? <laughs> they told me to clean and jerk it. They never said what happens after I've done that. It's as far as they got in his uh, level one. Yeah. So I think we need to take a look at the scoreboard here because the next interesting thing we've got to really take a look at is the fact that the battle now for silver is between Zhang Shulin and Dostin Yakubov. Dostin is three kilos behind Zhang in the snatch, so he's going to have to out clean and jerk him by four kilos. That's why he's just asked for 182 kilos. This will move him into the lead. Uh, yeah, it will. Yep, 322 kilos it will put him at. So we're going to hopefully see a nice little battle for silver. That is assuming that Rizky, you know, can come out and make these lifts. I saw him hit. Rizky's bumped his opening lift to 187 oh as my well word. to really avoid this. He has no intent intention of opening 180 kilos. Now I have a fair amount of confidence for Dawson on this lift. Yeah, his opener was very comfortable, well within his abilities. Solid clean. Oh, strong jerk. Very powerful drive. Yeah. Jerk is just gorgeous. The depth that he gets with the bend in the back knee. Yeah. Uh, you don't see that from many weightlifters. It's not just a, a technical aspect of the jerk. It's also a strength requirement to be able to, to, to hold that weight with such a bend in the back leg. Yeah, so he's forcing uh, Zheng Shulin to really have to take some big lifts here. 183 for Zheng Shulin. That's going to reclaim the lead by you know, a considerable margin. It'll be four kilos up on Dostin. Dostin's going to then have to take 187, which will be a one kilo personal record if he's forced into that position. He'll hop forward, no trouble standing. <laughs> no wonder he practiced the pause front squats. Can he hold that? He's got a bit of a wobbly elbow. He's gonna have to let it go. Yeah, just did not quite have the position he needed to fight with that. No. You know, that's the issue when you don't have a great lockout, as he doesn't. You're sort of holding that bar overhead with a little bit more musculature than Structure, I suppose. Right. And, you know, he, you can see him fighting, extending at the triceps, trying to hold on. It's just a little bit too much weight there. Yeah, basically all the parts were there. It's about 99% of the way there. But yeah. any twisting there, and if he's kind of drooping to his right side, just could not fight with it. So that's unfortunate because it's now going to put him in a really compromised position. Yeah. He's got. He's going to have to retake this realistically. Yeah. Take he's the got two third minutes. place kind of locked in, but I think he's definitely wanting that that uh, metal there, that silver. 
And you have to think if they are any changing though. I'm guessing they're going to bump up a little bit, maybe to buy some time. Yeah. But uh, for him to go any higher, I would be surprised. And I mean, the strength that he had, Max, to just stand up from an absolute dead stop in that yeah. clean. Didn't catch a bounce. He's got a little bit of a hop forward. He mentioned the difficulty in catching a bounce when you jump forward. Uh, tend to lose the bar up front if you start getting up too early when you're one of those sorts of lifters. But when you've got ample leg strength like he does, it really doesn't cause much of an issue as yeah. well. Yeah, and as the bar gets this high in excess of these lifters' body weights, we're well over 100 kilos above their body weight, yep. uh, balance becomes so important. If that bar is forward or back, just a, a few centimeters or inches, it could be <laughs> it could be near impossible. Yep. So he's coming out again. He is going to retake 183 kilos. Yeah, so they just declared that, and he's repeating here. So from the crowd, we hear Zhang Shulin Jai Yo, which means let's go Zhang Shulin in Mandarin. So here he comes out. This attempt to move back into the lead and very potentially be enough for uh, the silver medal. Of course, we still have the opener of Rizky Jinsia coming. Still up almost on his toes yeah. there. That's a better jerk. Same Ayo. thing happening. <laughs> Just cannot fight that twisting. Max, what's a uh, what's an athlete or a coach to do in training to try and work on this? Is there anything they can do? Yeah, you know, they would have to look at maybe what's going on in his hips. Maybe he's got something that causes him to twist a little bit here. You can see that weight's all the way on the outside of his right foot. Right. Uh, he's just a little bit off position there. It's really a tough thing to deal with. I imagine they spend an enormous amount of time strengthening his overhead position. Yeah. In my opinion, he did everything right there. He held the split position as long as he could to try and stabilize. He wasn't trying to rush to get up and recover his feet. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's just a bit too heavy and you're just not in the right position. It was a bit of an Oculov 2015 yeah. on that split joke there. One of, the most, one of the most incredible, incredible. presence of mind events. Yeah. That was one of those moments where to the untrained eye, or to somebody who's never really watched weightlifting, nothing happened. Yeah. But to people who know the sport, so much happened in that paused position in the split. Here comes Dustin Yakubov, 185 kilos. This just simply bumps him up. He's already guaranteed at least a silver. This for uh, this one's for him. It doesn't really increase his personal record either. No, just a kilo shy. Well, yeah, not today, but you know what? He's going to be absolutely thrilled with that. Five for six. He snatched 140 kilos. He clean and jerked 182 kilos. Put him on 322 kilos. And now you can see the crowd is starting to get a little bit excited because the Rizki show is about to happen. 186 kilos. He just dropped his opener by one kilo. Now, Max, assuming he hits this... What does he do? You know, he went for the junior world record on the snatch. Would he go for his own junior world record on the clean drop too? My guess is he would go 186 to 191. Or 190, then 195? Yeah. 195, wow. Let's see how he makes this look. is an enormous opener for the 19 year old wow oh okay that, that looked a bit tough on that clean it did you know he he almost has a bit of a Carlos Nassar esque quality to him. Right. Both of them very young. Yeah. The bar moves around a little bit. Their body's moving around a little bit. They don't quite have that solid, concise movement on every single aspect of the lift. No, they don't have that established Dawson Yakubov style. Right. And jerk. You know he's probably done thousands of more repetitions than these younger athletes have in the lift. This is going to make things a little bit tricky now. Uh, this is going to be tired 
He yeah. stood up with a tough clean. He attempted a jerk. And now he's not going to have long. He's got a two-minute clock. Does he go up a kilo to try and get a bit of extra time? I mean, at this level, you know, at this weight, is there a difference between 86 and 87? Is it you noticeable? Know, the amount of time he'll gain from that one kilo change, being that the weights are on the outside, is just so small. It's yeah. probably not worth it. You know, especially the way that clean looked. That was a bit a bit tougher than expected. Yes, uh, it was. Not necessarily that it's too hard for him or too heavy, but... You know, he just kind of moved around a bit. It was not as uh, not as crisp as you'd want, especially for an opener. So we assume he's going to take this. I think that's the only smart move here. He's got to secure this before he even thinks about anything else because he still has to win. He still needs a total. Now I've been uh, I've been surprised, Max, at the number of athletes who haven't taken their full two minutes. Yeah, a lot of people coming out basically only after maybe 30 seconds or so. Although Shows we have seen a couple time out. Yes, we have earlier on in the competition in the 45s and 49s. One from a Chinese lifter. Okay, a lot of pressure on this lift. Let's see what he can do. Better clean. Nice and clean. Can it, oh dear. Okay. Yeah, a little forward on that jerk. It's the second miss in a row. We've seen one athlete in this entire competition miss, miss, and make. That happened yesterday. It was Long Jouet from the women's 59s. But this is a horrible situation. Yeah, the for worst, the worst, worst case scenario here is you miss your first attempt. But the only thing more difficult than that is missing your second, <laughs> right? Because you really, yeah. you're you're now in a bad spot. You're as tired as you can possibly be. Yes. And the pressure is on. Everything is sitting in your mind here. You know you have no chance at you know taking a record attempt. Uh, so really, it's a matter of do or die here to just stay in the competition. Yeah. yeah he made 194 kilos in the 73 kilo category, and he made 197 kilos. In the 81 kilo category, weighing 76. Max, he looks maybe a little bit more nervous there on screen, a little bit more like things yeah. have suddenly become real. The Asian title is right there. And what's most oh. sort of devastating for him is he outsnatched everyone by nine kilos. Yeah. He could have come out here and opened it. He could have opened it 175 kilos and won this. Yeah. Hopefully those are not, uh, not the words he's saying afterward here. <laughs> Dawson Yakubov is definitely uh, antsy here. Yep. He's really hoping that he may be the winner here. Yeah, he's going to keep an eye on the uh, on the scoreboard in the back room. There's not a video feed in the back room, which means that he's going to be keeping an ear out. He knows the sound, the rhythm of what a clean joke's supposed to look like. He's going to know if Rizki drops this too early. If he makes it. He becomes the senior Asian champion. If he doesn't, he bombs out. Absolutely everything on the line here for Rizki Jinnansir. Two-time junior world record holder. Everything's on the line here. Better clean, much better clean. There we go, can he hold, oh my god, he just can't hold on. The Uzbeks in the crowd, in fact the Saudis in the crowd cheering, they've just realized that Nawaf has actually ended up medal. with the bronze medal. It's devastating for Rizgi, you can see the disappointment on his face, but I have to say Max, he's a gracious loser, it just wasn't there today, but he's done absolutely everything he could, he's still young, He's got plenty of years ahead of him. And uh, you know yeah. what? It's going to be back to the drawing board for him and his coach, his parents, his team, trying to work out what they can do. How can they try and help him transfer some of that, well, those enormous training numbers onto the competition platform? Because yeah. he said that he'd hit 205 in training. and snapped 170. He comes out here. Just didn't quite pull it off today. You know, potentially just one of those situations where 
Uh, they didn't play it as smart as they could, did not lock in that victory. Uh, certainly we know he's capable of those big lifts, but like you said, he could have maybe opened just a tiny bit lower. Obviously hindsight is 20-20. By the skin of his teeth, Dustin Yakubov, who we see just checking his hair there. He knows he's about to be on camera. His coach just handed him the front-facing camera. Um, takes a gold medal. A 140 kilo snatch, 182 kilo clean and jerk, 322 kilos for him to take the gold medal. A kilo behind, though, we have Zhang Shulin, who hit a 321 kilo total, and then the bronze medal going to the athlete from Saudi Arabia. He went 139, 170, a 309 kilo total. But the shocking story of the day, the favorite, the man who opened up above everyone else in the snatch, who outsnatched the... Uh, well, the top snatch, uh, the second snatch by nine kilos, Rizki Jininsia ended up bombing out in the clean jerk. 152 kilos in the snatch, and he tried 186 three times. Max, it just goes to show you that when you think things are pretty much set in stone in weightlifting, well, they're not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah things change a lot. And, you know, it's it, one of the situations here where we saw Nawaf of Saudi Arabia uh, basically thinking that he had been ousted from the metal podium uh, and no one really expected that bomb out but here he is yeah we've not seen Bronze. too many bomb outs in this competition but it's how these things go it's how the cookie crumbles as they say <laughs> uh, guys that's going to be it from us we're going to keep the live stream on for the next few minutes so you can check out the medal ceremony for these athletes for the 73 kilo lifters but from me and Max and the rest of the weightlifting house team. That's going to be it for today. We're going to be back tomorrow. We have the women's 71 kilo category. We have one of my favorite athletes in the tournament. It's uh, uh, Chen Wenhui from Taipei. She's going to be going up against Li Jingen, who's an athlete who we don't really know a huge amount about from China, but we do know that she's got the biggest entry total. We also have the men's 81s, where we have uh, one of Rizki's teammates, actually, the 73 kilo world champion who's bumped up. We have Rahmat Owen Abdullah, He'll be going against a bunch of other incredible lifters, including China's snatch sensation, Lu Dei Lin. Uh, every single session available live and on demand over at Weightlifting House. Thank you all for tuning in. And from all of us over here, we'll see you tomorrow.